Hello guys, Dan here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to overclock a processor. Now, I personally have my i7 here, and yeah, I'm just going to be showing you how to overclock. Um, this is actually a K-SKU, um, and yeah, we're going to be overclocking an Intel chip. But um, yeah, the same principles will apply, and yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to yeah change things like the multiplier, and also stuff like um, dialing in manual voltages, which in turn should give you lower temperatures, but better stability at the higher clock rates. So I'm going to change the position of the camera, yeah, and kind of get into it. I will say that I am using a Gigabyte motherboard and I have one of the um, one of the more advanced kind of um, <clears throat> BIOSes, but um, yeah, typically it's all the same really. All the layout is it will be different on all different motherboards and BIOSes, but you will kind of find everything in whatever BIOS you you have for your motherboard. So that's all good. So yeah, just gonna change the camera and yeah, gonna show you how to overclock. So it is relatively simple. So then I've just loaded up the computer and yeah, we're now actually in the BIOS. Now the first thing that you guys want to do is actually check your frequency of your processor. So as you can see here, we're running at 3.9 gigahertz and also the RAM is running at 2.4 gigahertz. Now, first thing to do is, you know, if you do hop onto the internet, you can kind of see uh, what other people are kind of getting to. Now, in my computer, I do have an i7, it's a 4770K and since it's a KSQ, a lot of people can kind of get this to 4 gigahertz and kind of beyond. Now, this is clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, and if I just go to the MIT current status, as it says here, the processor is at 3.5 gigahertz, and the turbo frequency is 3.9 gigahertz, and that is why actually on this main screen here, it's reporting to be at 3.9, that's actually the turbo frequency. Now, the first thing you want to do when you want to overclock is actually to go to the advanced frequency settings, so there we are, and then go all the way down to the advanced CPU core settings, and then disable the Intel turbo boost technology. Since you're doing a manual overclock, Tether Boost can kind of interfere, so the best thing to do is to just disable that there. Also, uh, yeah, just kind of diving straight into the overclocking is, um, yeah, so you want to be going up to your clock ratio and changing this to something um, a little bit higher than the frequency, uh, well, the stock kind of frequency. So this is at 3, uh, 35. Now what a computer does is times that by 100 and that is actually your total frequency. So if 35 equals 3.5 gigahertz, 40 will equal say 4 gigahertz. So I'm just going to change this straight off the bat to uh, 38 and then just going to click enter on there. So now when this boots it's going to be running at 3.8 gigahertz. So just click the escape button there and kind of again. Then yeah, now we're going to, going to be going over and clicking save and exit. And yeah, just going to be rebooting to see if this works. Now I have kind of overclocked this and kind of got to 4.3 and I know what I need to do to get to 4.3. But then, um, yeah, just going to show you the process that you would normally go through to overclock. So yeah, you just want to kind of boot up your windows and yeah, you want to run a few programs to actually see what kind of temperatures you're getting to and uh, yeah, seeing if it's actually stable. Now the thing that I would recommend to use is Prime95 and also to use CoreTem to actually measure your processor's actual um, yeah, temperature. So now that we're in Windows, um, it is pretty fast to boot actually since you have an SSD, but uh, yeah, the first thing you want to do is actually load up your core temp and then yeah, just uh, to see what kind of temperature you're running at. So temperature is yeah between 30 to 32 degrees, but you want to see what it's actually going to be while you're under load. So you want to bring up Prime95 and you want to run this and yeah, you want to be running these small FFTs. This, this produces maximum heat and um, yeah, that's essentially what we're going to be testing. So we're at 28 degrees and yeah, we're going to be seeing what the maximum can get to. So this is running on all eight cores. This is a quad core processor with eight threads. So now that we're running Prime 95, temperatures have gone up to about 58 degrees. So there we are, 58 degrees, 59 degrees. So I would imagine this will sit around a 61, 62 kind of point. But yeah, the, the, you want to run this for about five, 10 minutes, see what you get to. And if your system doesn't crash, you kind of okay. And then yeah, you can set off your PC, go back into the BIOS, and then kind of, yeah, increase that multiplier again. So we're running about six degrees. I'm kind of happy with that. So just gonna kind of close this down, close this program down as well, and then kind of turn off the PC. Anyway, I'm going to be showing you how to do kind of manual kind of voltages because typically when you just change the multiplier, you, uh, yeah, your motherboard is feeding the kind of what the processor kind of says it wants in terms of the voltage, and this typically does give you the higher temperatures. So now that the PC is turned off, you just want to click the power button again. Okay, then turn it on. There you go. So there we are. So now we're on. Now we're loading all up. As soon as you hit the bleep, click the delete button on your keyboard, and it brings you into the BIOS again. So here we are, where are we? There we are. So yeah, you wanna go into your frequency settings again. Um, yeah, you wanna go all, all the way down to your CPU uh, clock ratio. And yeah, so now we're gonna be changing this to 
four zero, so 40. So now we're going to be uh, booting at four gigahertz. Now one thing that we're going to be doing now is actually putting in manual voltages to kind of lower the temperatures. A processor, as I said, does say that it always needs more voltage. It doesn't. Processors, you, you, yeah, they always want more voltage than what you actually need. So you want to be going into, uh, yeah, you want to click escape. And now instead of going into the frequency settings, you want to be going into the voltage settings and going into the CPU core voltage control. And then where you find the CPU V core, this is what we're going to be changing. So this is at 1.094 volts. So we're just going to be typing in one ourselves. So if we just type in 1.1. Um, so there we are, 1.1 volts. I'm going to boot, see if the system boots with this. If not, you know, we're going to be kind of increasing the voltage to see what we get. So just booting now, this will now boot at 4 gigahertz. So this is a 500 megahertz improvement. And yeah, we haven't really done much. So, so if this boots and the temperatures are okay, we've increased the processor by half a gigahertz. And that's, uh, yes, yeah, just for free. That's just for free. I will say I'm using a, a, a Corsair H90. Um, that water cooler does kind of cost quite a bit of money. So it's not exactly free performance. People always say oh, overclocking's free performance. In a way, it kind of isn't, you know, since you need to, you know, spend time overclocking and actually buy a cooler. But, um, you know, you know, overclocking is nice. Now, having a good cooler is nice. It just keep your processor nice and cool. So now we're going to be loading up the core temp again. And as you can see, the kind of adult temperature is about 35 degrees. And now, yeah, we're going to be loading up Prime 95 again. Uh, running that small FFTs. There we are. And see what kind of temperature we're going to be, going to be getting up to now. So we're about 55 degrees. There we are. So we have put manual voltages in now. So yeah, 55 degrees, 56 degrees. So there we are. That's it. So it's a little bit cooler than last time. I believe last time we got to 6 degrees. So it's a little bit cooler and we're running, uh, yeah, 200 megahertz faster because before we did boot at 3.8 gigahertz. So yeah, there we are. That's the good thing of dialing in manual kind of voltages. So this is about 6 degrees. I'm kind of happy with them temperatures. I will say, um, I will be happy to about 75 degrees personally. A lot of people run their, you know, um, Intel kind of processors at about 80. That is fine. So you don't kind of surpass about 80 to 85 degrees, you're fine. Um, if you're, yeah, if you are using core temp to see what temperature your processor is, where it says the T-junction max here, this is the maximum um, kind of temperature, you want to be about 20 degrees cooler than that temperature that it says there. So yeah, the temperature is about 57 degrees. So I'm kind of happy with that. So can I shut off the computer yet again? Listen for the beep, click the delete button. And there we are, there we are, kind of in. Here we in, there we are. So now, yeah, we have just booted it at 4 gigahertz and uh, yeah, it did work. We saw the temperatures, that was quite nice. So now we're going to go into the frequency settings again, kind of up this again. Now, since we're now 4 gigahertz, now we're going to be going up a lot slower than what we did before. So now we're going to be trying to boot at, at 4.1 gigahertz. And uh, yeah, we're going to leave the voltage actually at what it was. Now the voltage on here is actually... <clears throat> yeah, 1.1 volts. We're going to see if we boot, if we do, if we're stable, we can kind of leave it at that. Oh, you guys, you know, you can choose to go further if you want to. Overclocking is kind of like personal preference, you know, you, it, it, it's kind of, you choose what you want to get to. Um, because the higher you go, the better your performance is going to be, but you're going to be running a hotter processor, and uh, yeah, when you get into them kind of high temperatures, your fans are going to be spinning faster and faster. So it is kind of, it, you know, it's kind of preference if you want speed of, of a kind of like, you know, silence, totally up to you. But I would, but I would kind of recommend overclocking a tiny bit because in terms of noise, you're not going to really hear um, much difference just by overclocking a tiny bit. So there we are, back in Windows. And if I just load up the core temp again. So yeah, this is reporting to be at 4.1 gigahertz. So um, yeah, what we're going to do, load up uh, the Prime 95 again. We're going to run the uh, small FFTs, and hopefully we shouldn't get a blue screen or anything like that. Doesn't look like it, we're all stable. There we are, so yeah, we are running, yeah, 4.1 gigahertz on this i7, and again, we're about 56 to about 57 degrees, that's kind of okay. I would recommend you, uh, you know, kind of running these tests for longer than, say, one or two minutes like I have been doing. The sisters, uh, yeah, uh, stress the system to see if there are any kind of errors or anything like that. Um, so yeah, there we are. So about 57 degrees. As again, this is okay. And yeah, we're just going to restart the PC yet again and try it at 4.2 gigahertz. I do think actually we are going to get a blue screen or some kind of crash with 4.2 gigahertz because I am aware that yeah, 1.1 volts is not kind of enough for that. So yeah, just shutting down. And yeah, we're going to see um, if the PC is kind of okay with the yeah 4.2 gigahertz. So actually press restart. So it's going to boot up itself. Here's the bleep. Click delete. We're getting to the BIOS. 
There we are. So yeah, 5.1 gigahertz, we're going to go into the frequency. We're going to go down here to clock ratio, change this to 42. So now we're going to be booting at the uh, yeah the 4.2 gigahertz here. This mouse is really laggy in the virus, I don't know why. So yeah, there we are, 4.2 gigahertz. Now I'm just going to go back. Just check the voltage again. So that is still at the yeah the 1.1 volt here. This is the, the V core. Click escape and again. Then go over to save and exit and click yes. So yeah, we're going to see if this one boots. See what kind of the temperatures are like. I will say there will be kind of a cutoff point um, in terms of you know uh, when the temperatures will really really start to rise because that does happen. A lot, a lot of people do get there the these i7s to about four. 2 to 4.3 gigahertz. Quite a lot of people do get to 4.5 gigahertz if they're using kind of you know custom mod equipment and stuff like that. Um, so there we are. So yeah, just waiting for Windows. So there we are in Windows. We've got an idle temperature about 31 degrees, and yeah, it has registered to be 4.2 gigahertz. So yeah, we're going to be clicking on the uh, stress test again. So torture test. Uh, yeah, the small FFTs and click OK. Let's see what these temps are going to get to. Because again, it's about 56 degrees, 57 degrees kind of-ish. But yeah, we, we haven't been getting no kind of freezes. Oh, we have, we have actually froze. The mouse doesn't move. We have frozen. We have got a blue screen there. So that means, um, so, so it says here actually the error. It says a clock interrupt was not received on a second of the process over the allocated time interval. This is just dumping the physical memory to the disk. So yeah, we've got our first blue screen. Yay! <laughs> there we are. So um, yeah, I think this is done. So yeah, you just want to be clicking the reset button on your PC now. There you are. Nothing to be alarmed of. Blue screens are not typically bad. As long as you know what you've done. If you change settings in the BIOS and you get a blue screen, you just put them back and be all good. So just entering the BIOS. Once it loads up. Sometimes when you have blue screens entering, BIOS it does take a long time. I don't actually know what it's doing, but uh, yeah, we'll kind of we'll leave it there. So we are loading in. Once it loads, that's the way we are. So 4.2 gigahertz booted, but when we ran the stress test, it crashed. And you know, so if, so if you go into a game or something on your PC, or if you do some video editing, it's probably going to crash then. And that's bad because uh, yeah, your PC will turn off on it. So now we're going to be going into the voltages, CPU voltage, and we're going to change this to 1.2. So we are 1.2 volts. Now we'll say the temperature of a processor doesn't necessarily increase as you increase the frequency. It increases when you increase the V core. So by increasing this from 1.1 to 1.2, we're going to be seeing an increase in temperature. So saving exit, there we are. So yeah, we're booting up at the same frequency just with a higher voltage now. So hopefully now we shouldn't get a blue screen. And this is kind of the basic kind of principle of, of overclocking. You kind of step up the frequency. Um, if it crashes, then all, all you need to do is uh, up the voltage. And then, yeah, once you up the voltage, it should be stable, but you will get high temperatures. And yeah, you just kind of repeat that again and again and again. So we're just going to be waiting for Windows to boot here. So here we are, we're now in Windows, I've just looked up two programs, and what you will get actually, we'll get a little Windows message here saying that Windows has recovered from an unexpected shutdown, we'll also hear that the problem event name is a blue screen, and kind of tells you what kind of caused that, um, yeah, where the problem has been dumped and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I, I really wouldn't recommend checking for the, for the solution, Microsoft will not help you, they never do. So, so yeah, we have increased the voltage now. Uh, idle temperature of about 30 degrees. So um, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna be running a stress test again. So we're gonna click OK, and this time hopefully we shouldn't uh, kind of crash. So if I keep moving the mouse around in a circle, uh, just to see if it doesn't crash. So now yeah, the temperatures are about 63 degrees. So it's a little bit hotter than what it was. Um, so yeah, we have moved up about seven, eight degrees. It is actually yeah, it, it is a little, a little bit hotter. This you can actually tell. So it's 63 to about 64 degrees. So there we are. It's a little bit hotter, but we are still stable. We aren't crashing. Um, yeah, we aren't crashing at all. Um, we can still kind of move the mouse. You can load load up, say, multiple programs and all that kind of jazz. So I think this is stable. What I would recommend, actually, is leaving this, yeah, for about an hour, seeing if anything happens. And, um, yeah, if you're still able to move your mouse, your temperatures are okay, then, yeah, feel free to go back into the BIOS and open it again. So we're going to do that. Start and restart. There we are. So yeah, I'm going to be getting to 4.3. So yeah, we're going to up it again, 100 megahertz, and see if, if we are stable. So yes, I'm still fine of about 65 degrees. That's completely fine to me. I'll be okay to about 75, as I said. So there we are. We're now back in the BIOS. And as you can see, yeah, 4.2 gigahertz. So yeah, we're going to be upping this now. 
to um, yeah, kind of you know higher yet again. So now we're going to be typing in 43. So now we're going to be running at 4.3 gigahertz. We are getting pretty damn fast, and yeah, we're kind of hitting the kind of roof of what you can kind of get with this processor with my uh, current kind of you know uh, water cooler. Well, sir, better cool you have. Um, yeah, the better kind of overclock you're going to get, and yeah, it's probably going to be quieter as well, I will say that. Um, so yeah, 4.3 gigahertz, we're going to click escape, see what the voltages are set at. So the voltages are, yeah, they're still set at 1.2 volts there, as you can see. There we are. So yeah, just gonna boot, uh, yeah, just gonna save this, I'm gonna boot, see if it's all stable. And if it is, I think I might leave it at this. 4.3 gigahertz is quite a nice speed. I have got on this processor to 4.4. However, it, uh, yeah, the the actual, um, the actual uh, temperatures do rise a, a, a lot. So. For me, 4.3 uh, yeah, gigahertz is a nice kind of speed to be at. And yeah, just gonna kind of run Prime 95, kind of show you what temperatures I get. And um, yeah, ho hopefully my PC isn't that loud in the background. I do have 11 fans at the end of the day. But um, yeah, we'll just say for tip for you guys, the more fans, the better. If it, the more fans you get, you can run them at a lower speed and you still get the same airflow as what you would by having fewer fans at a higher speed. So more fans is not exactly noisy. More fans, um, whoop, what happened? I don't know. Yeah, so. More fans typically means that you can run them slower and uh, it's quieter, so yeah, PC is only as loud as the loudest fan, that's a good tip for you there. So I'll load up card temp again, run up Prime 95, there we are, and anyway, we're going to be running again small FFTs, would always kind of recommend that. So yeah, as you can see here, look, we are at, fo oh, oh wait, oh, oh wait, a little stutter there, mouse, mouse stuttered. We're still alive, if you can still move your mouse, oh, there we are. So the PC is not blue screen that time, the PC is actually just died so, so it just turned off so it just turned off there so that one's so that one wasn't stable at all that one so you want to go into your voltage and and i want to up this again so this is now going to be up to 1.25 so we're going to go up um by a smaller amount there so so yeah the voltage what did i put that on 1.250 volts so let's test that again so pc didn't like that last one it just shut off there we are so here we are back in Windows, as again you do get this message saying that you recovered from an unexpected kind of shutdown. So just going to click cancel on there and uh, yeah, just going to load up car temp yet again. Then I'm going to load up the Prime 95 again. See, so we're going to be testing yet again what kind of temperature we get to. I will say the desktop, the desktop background has kind of died, it's gone black. Yeah, just go find it again, set it as the background. Um, so here we are, we're now running at the 4.3 gigahertz. We're not crashing, but the, as you can see, the temperatures are now 73 degrees, so it's, it's quite toasty. And this is what I kind of leave it at, because 4.3 gigahertz is a nice speed, and yeah, moving up to 4.4 does increase the temps quite a bit. So here we are, we are stable. I would leave this yet again for, um, for yeah, you know, quite a bit, running for about an hour. Some people recommend like 24 hours, I really, really don't want to recommend that's kind of like a waste of time. But um, yeah, this is a kind of nice temperature. And um, yeah, it's going to kind of conclude the video, guys. I uh, will say, yeah, overclocking is not that difficult, and hopefully you guys have kind of got the gist. I will say overclocking is not that difficult, and hopefully by watching this video, you now have a yeah, and, and a very good idea of how to overclock your processor. Um, so yeah, that's all good. This does apply to both Intel AMD. I know AMD can change the multiplier as well, which is always nice. And uh, yeah, I hope you've kind of enjoyed the video, guys. Apart from that, just going to say goodbye. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And yeah, if you guys have any questions about the overclocking, so I know it's typically kind of like, you know, a complex thing. Yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to them in a reasonable amount of time for you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you in my next video. Goodbye.